Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It's Wednesday. We're in a good mood. Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson definitely optimistic after what happened last night. Let's have a look at what's happening today. Yeah, lots to discuss, and of course, we're better to start than Hamden Park. Our reporter, Gabriel Antoniazzi, looks back. Scotland edge past Israel 3-2, thanks to a hat-trick from James Forrest, to seal a Euro 2020 playoff place, as well as promotion to Nations League B on a rainy night at Hamden Park. It all came together for manager Alex McLeish as his side showed both their scintillating attacking threat and their defensive liability. The Scots started nervously and went behind after former Celtic midfielder Berem Kyle was given time outside the box to curl the ball into the top corner and silence the home crowd after only nine minutes. However, Stuart Armstrong grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck and carried the ball deep into Israel territory several times eventually releasing a left-footed strike that was blocked and landed at the feet of James Forrest, who levelled things up. Scotland took control from there and the excellent Stephen Fletcher headed the ball through to Ryan Christie, who cut the ball back to Forrest after a lung-busting run, with the winger keeping his nerve and putting Scotland ahead. After the break, Ryan Fraser passed it across the box to the coolest man in the stadium, James Forrest again, who made it three on the night and five in two games this week. Scotland looked comfortable, but defensive frailty remains, as again Israel were given space outside the Scottish 18-yard line, Zahabi smashing the ball past the helpless Alan McGregor in the goal to set up a tense final 10 minutes. However, it was McGregor who had the last laugh, was an outstanding save from Hemed with two minutes to play, ensuring Scotland got all three points. It was nail-biting in the end, but it was enough. Pivotal central midfielder Callum McGregor hailed the big characters in the team after they came from behind to win and hold on at the end. It was brilliant. Um, you know, a really frantic game. MTN, you know, they looked kind of dangerous. Counter attack, we looked dangerous as well. And you know, it probably could have been a few more goals in it to be honest. But you know, we're delighted in there to, to come through that last ten minutes. You know, it was a real big effort for the lads and shows some big big characters in there that you can when you're up against it, you can come through it. So great. The win means Scotland will play in Nations League B with teams such as Germany. Croatia and Wales when the competition next comes around. In terms of Euro 2020 qualification, it gives them the safety net of a playoff place in March 2020, which will be a home game against Finland in the semi-final for a possible final against Serbia or Norway, as long as all four teams fail to qualify through the traditional routes. Match winner Forrest, who has now scored 12 goals in his last 11 games for club and country, thinks this team can go far with the hunger and desire they have. A really, uh, I think it's a really hungry group of boys. Like, I think every, our club's doing really well and, and uh, a lot of runners in the team and that as well. And I think that does help. And As I said, we have, we have got a big squad and a lot of players playing like down in England and, and uh, like up, up here as well. So I think that does help in the competition for places as well. The victory bodes well for McLeish, who will now surely have the next 18 months to try and build a team capable of competing at the top and reach the nation's first major tournament in 22 years. Rafi, your assessment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there last mm -hmm. night. The, the pleasing thing for me was at the end of the game when uh, Big Alec, uh, the players and the supporters were celebrating. We've not seen that for a while. You know, the whole place was bouncing, although it was only 21,000. I think the, the Israel goal set us back a wee bit at the beginning. It took us maybe 20 minutes to get into the game. But once we got the goal, we started to play some good football. I think they were technically better than us, but we had young players in there with a lot of aggression. I'd love to know who the sitting midfielders were because I couldn't see any, because Armstrong and McGregor were bombing about all over the place. It was a, it was an attacking formation and, and that's what we did. We, we, that's what we asked for at the beginning of the game, was to show the, what we've got and the boys certainly did that. And once we got the second goal, uh, I thought it was only going to be one winner, but we wouldn't be Scotland if we we didn't make it hard for ourselves in the end. That, oh. that, would be, that would be the only thing I would worry about. Still defensively, when we're not in possession of the ball, when the other team obviously have got it, we're vulnerable. We're vulnerable 
for most of the game and we, we lost possession. Yeah, let's be blunt about it. Better teams would kill us. Um, the last minute of the game, last two minutes, you know, McGregor again, I mean, it's a sliding doors moment for Alec and I'm so happy for him. McGregor pulls off a save. Again, Phillips caught, plays everybody on, and they could have snatched the draw they were looking for. Yeah, I was speaking to Rafi off air about it. It's one of the saves that we expect Alan McGregor to make now. Um, the sort of season he's had, he's been fantastic. Um, but I, again, look, uh, I'm not surprised. Alan McGregor's a quality goalkeeper. It was a quality save, and that's why he's number one for me. He's the best goalkeeper by a country mile. Um, he's a leader, and Alec will be... Um, Ali will be delighted with him. Um, and listen, as I said, for me, Alan McGregor is the number mm -hmm. one, and he'll gain you points with these sort of saves. And that save last night, last couple of minutes, that's what top, uh, top goalkeepers do and make top saves, and that's what it was. Yeah. Um, James Forrest, undoubtedly, you know, man of the match, scores a hat trick, he was magnificent. But the supporting cast, I thought, was superb. Um, mainly, for me, Stuart Armstrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stuart Armstrong was everywhere, you know, and uh, that's what I'm saying. I think he was supposed to be playing some kind of defensive role in that midfield, but every time he got the ball, every opportunity, he was driving them, he was committing tackles, and, and it was leaving space for, like, Fraser and Forrest, and he was doing all the work. But, no, I, th I thought there were a lot, lot of pluses in the game. Fletcher, as well. You know, led the, the line well. He got the, the nod on, obviously, for the goal. And we Fraser, maybe not in the game as much as we all thought he would be, but certainly when he was on it, he just causes trouble just driving at, driving at people. I'm so glad you mentioned Fraser, Ruffy, because, you know, Barry, if you're talking <coughs> about experience, it is an art to hold the ball in. It is an art flicking it on when you know who's behind you. He, all of these things, it might look easy, but he made it look easy last night. Yeah, look, Fraser and Forrest, for me, are, are, are got to be certain starters for, for Scotland. They're guys that can carry the ball 30, 40 yards up the pitch. They've got a trick, and you've seen in the last couple of games, they've been match winners, both of them. Um, I says it last Friday, I was hoping they would go for it. They certainly did with it, uh, playing the two wide boys. And again, um, last night, I thought the two of them were, uh, were fantastic. And they're real match winners, and they're at a great age as well. I mean, just look at James Forrest, I mean, five goals. In, in two games um, and at a national level is phenomenal his form's unbelievable and Fraser down at Bournemouth he's playing in the, the top league week in week out yeah. so there is major major plus points would you keep Fletcher involved? yep I, again I said on Friday Fletcher's probably not an out and out goal scorer but what he does is he brings other people into the game he's got a great first touch he's clever he knows what's round about him and he'll be disappointed the last few squads that he's not been involved, but he's, he's come into this, uh, these last two games and he's shown what a major player he can be for, for the Scotland team. Yeah, Alex. I was, going to, I was going to say, my biggest problem is Ryan Christie. I, I think when we saw Ryan Christie at Aberdeen, we all said he's a future Scotland player. And last night, again, he was absolutely superb. What happens when Sham and Brown come back at Celtic? Does he get a place in that team? Well... Don't look at me, I'm not paid, <laughs> no, I'm not paid to pick that team. If they come back into the side, <laughs> yeah. we're going to lose a young player who needs to be playing week in, week out, because in that team last night, I thought he was absolutely superb. Yeah, well, you can give us your view on that if you're a, a Celtic fan. Uh, as far as the manager's concerned, he's taken a fair bit of criticism, so it's good to, to let him have his moment. I've got to put it in perspective, you know. Um, I, I, I took a hit after that Israel game, I, you know, I was... I was down on that one. But the thing about football and being in the game for so many years, I always, I'm always very conscientious and I want to look at it and see how I can do it better. Criticism is, is fine because it makes you want to do better. And uh, we bounced back again, resilience, and uh, we, we worked really hard for the two games and we did a lot of preparation. And the players, as I said, every one of them bursting to get on that pitch tonight. You've got to hand it to him. <clears throat> you yeah. know, some people have been, I think, overly critical of him. The, the, the key element here, uh, Ruffy, is the remit is quite simply top the group. Once they knew exactly who was in the group, top the group. Some people were going over the top about friendlies, which, again, is a learning curve. I, I just looked at the group and I thought, he's got to top it. If he doesn't, against the likes of Albania and Israel, then you can start criticising him and calling for his head. But he's mm -hmm. done exactly what he, 
you know, has been set out to do. That was his remit. Yeah, and, and that's why Barry's touched on the McGregor save. If Alan McGregor doesn't make that save, we'd be sitting here and certain people would be screaming for his head. You know, we're a young side, an international side, who I think are going places if they can all stick together and progress with their clubs as well. So Alex, every right, you know, to sit there. And that's what his message was. He knows the people out there who are, were after him. And, and that just quietens him for a wee while. And uh, he's and people have to remember, he, he's only human. Nobody likes criticism. doesn't matter who you are. You've got to live with it. And sometimes, individually, you've got to deal with it. And I would think when you're a Scottish manager, that's what you've got to do. So <coughs> I, to him. I, I was happy for him last night. Uh, Knowing Alec, obviously, I played <coughs> under him um, at Rangers in Scotland and Birmingham. I, I knew as soon as he was getting criticised, it would affect him. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, so it was a massive, massive two games for him. And you know what? Let's be positive. I know there are no great teams we've played against, but we've got two wins. I know it was touch and go towards the end, obviously, with, with Griegsy making that fantastic save. But you know what? As you say, we've topped the group. That was probably what we should have done for the start when the groups came out. We had to top the group, we've done it. Now we can look forward to getting the, the, the draw for the Euros now. We will look ahead to that in just a moment. I just got to share something. I share Ruffy's view and I wonder about it yourself. You know, some people will say we're being a little bit killjoy at the tail end of it. We've praised Scotland. Yep. They deserve the praise. We've praised the manager and the players. My only concern is I, I think the back line at times I think we'll give better teams opportunities to kill us off. Yep, yeah, I think we're I think we're really, really good middle to front. I do. I think we've got obviously it's it's a young group. Uh, middle to front, I think there's loads of potential there to work on. Um look good going forward. We can create loads of goal scoring opportunities. At the back, I've got to agree with you as a concern for me. It's who do we play? McKenna, I know he's had a lot of experience now, about eighteen months he's been a regular at um up at Aberdeen. I was talking Devlin come in and playing beside him. I know Charlie Mulgrew, he's pretty experienced, but it is a worry. When Tierney's back fit, does he go back to right back? It's not his natural position. Did you like Bates? Yeah, I thought he'd done, I thought he'd done well. Um, I thought when he was at Rangers, do you know what he is? He's an old school defender for me. Yeah. He's not, he'll, he'll be first to admit, he's not great on the ball, but I tell you what, the boy knows how to defend. Um, he takes up great positional sense. He done well for um, obviously making his debut. On Saturday, and I thought he'd done well again last night. Yeah, well, as Barry pointed out there, managers don't like being criticised. It affects them. Players don't like being criticised, but they certainly love being praised. And Alex McLeish was talking about the man of the moment, James Forrest. James's goals over the weekend and tonight, amazing. You know, great to see him scoring in his 25th cap and uh, then to get a hat-trick tonight. We... we, we Put him behind Matt Phillips in Hungary and he actually had three or four chances in that game and we, we felt that he definitely had the, the capabilities of going in and scoring. And of course he's four against St Johnson recently. Then um, we encourage him to do that more after watching pictures in the Portugal game. He, he could get in inside but he does it with his, his club as well and, he, and he's in phenomenal form. Yeah, James Forrest, a highlight among so many other contenders for Man of the Match. One thing I was impressed with, Ruffy, um, just before we hear from some of the Scotland players, uh, is the fact that even when they lost the goal, they still continued to play the football that I thought was evident at the tail end of Gordon Strachan's uh, reign. <clears throat> They're starting to get back to that. There's a yeah. confidence about that. Yeah, and it, and it didn't help any. There was only 21,000 at the game. You know, sometimes you need the crowd behind you, a full crowd pushing you on, but no, they, they stuck to their guns. Treacherous night though, Ruffy, Yeah, it, it was horrible, the conditions were terrible, but uh, we say it all the time, when we're at home, we want to cause other teams problems, and that's what we did, we, we Forrest on one side, Fraser on the other, Armstrong getting forward, and McGregor controlling the game. You know, it was a joy to watch, you know, a team actually going forward, trying to win the game, you know, on the back, as I said, it took doesn't matter who you're playing with. If you lose a goal when you're expected to win a game, it does set you back 15, 20 minutes. But they persevered, and there was a lot of good football getting played on in possession of the ball. Yeah. Do you know what that is? That's a test of character. I mean, it's a big game <clears> on Tuesday. Uh, last night, sorry. They go a goal down. It showed me they've got a bit of heart, a bit of grit and determination. 
and that would have pleased Alec McLeish, no doubt. And they come back for a goal down because it's easy. The fans start grumbling in the stands or whatever, but fair play to the boys. They stuck to their task and when they got over the line, that's the main thing for me. Yeah, the other thing that Barry will uh, realise, and of course Rafi as well, when you lose games, uh, having been a reporter, waiting for them, eh, Barry, any chance of a uh, uh, Barry, did you buy any chance of a word with the boys? <laughs> Rafi, any chance? <laughs> Nobody, custard pies. <coughs> but no surprise last night, um, our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi was able to speak to practically everybody. I think the character was sure to get back into the game and um, James Forrest was excellent with his three goals and... Um, very composed finish um, and the group you know our performance over in Albania was terrific and it set us, sets up perfectly for tonight's game um, and I thought we came through it excellent and won a goal down early on I thought we showed great character to come back in we're in a comfortable position two and a half time then we go three we're not we're in so much control but obviously it's disappointing to lose that second goal and put us under a wee bit of pressure the last 15 minutes but uh, I thought we stood up over the two games, the boys showed a lot of what they're all about and, and I think the fans will see that and, and they backed us on the night. I think we had the belief, I think within the camp and within the group, there was always that belief that we could go and achieve what we wanted to. There's always going to be negativity in football when uh, when things aren't going the way they're expected to or how people want them to, but um, I think in the modern day, um, being professional, you just need to focus on, on your job at hand and um, not get too bogged down in, on what's going on in the periphery. Yeah, so well put by uh, Stuart Armstrong. You thought he'd let Ryan Christie speak there, Ruffy. He was just desperate to get in, but it just wasn't happening. Um, OK, the positive of Israel, topping the group. Um, now, it, it's been complicated. I know so many of you are thinking, what happens with this whole Nations League? Well, here are the key dates now, and let me explain to you how it all goes. December 2nd, the Euro 2020 qualifying draw. Um, so this will be for the... Euro 2020 March to November 2019 games to actually try the official way to qualify for Euro 2020. Then we'll have the playoff final venue draw. Um, that's on November 2019. And then you get the Euro 2020 finals draw uh, in December. Uh, and then, of course, there's only four places left to be decided then, and that will be the Euro 2020 playoffs, which everyone has been playing for in this Nations League. So, uh, now it's as clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. clear now, Ruffy, because quite yeah. simply, we get two hits in it. Yeah. If we qualify through the normal route, which is the March to November 2019 qualifiers, mm -hmm. we don't need to worry about the playoff. But if we don't, then suddenly we've got a chance in that one game... Semi-final playoff, one game final playoff. Yeah, it's a safety valve that I'm sure Alec and the boys will know <laughs> at the back of their minds. We don't know who we're going to get in the draw. I think we're into pot three. So we're going to have good two good sides that we have to get ahead of in the in the group. Uh, it wouldn't just be like us not to need this playoff place. No, we'll just qualify ordinary and uh, we'll put ourselves through all these games. But no, I think it's a, it's a comfort zone to know that it's there. <laughs> and more importantly, it's a home game in the playoff, which I think is important. It's early days, and as you said, it's this embryonic stage of Alex trying to build again another team. And Barry, do you have a sense of optimism and confidence, albeit we don't know how the draws will all pan out? Do you have a sense of optimism and confidence that this might be our chance to finally get to a major finals? Well, it's our best chance. We've got, we've got two hits at it. I don't care what way we qualify, whether it's through, as you say, the official way. <laughs> or the, you can call it the unofficial way against Finland or whoever you get in the final. I don't really care as long as we get there because it's been far too long. We all know that. We want to go and see our national team at a major, a major finals. Now, I'm looking at that squad and there is a, a lot of good quality in it. As you said, I, I like midfield to front. I mean, you're going to have Naismith and Griffiths back, hopefully. You've got an abundance of talent for me in the middle of the park. You've got wide guys that can win you games. And you've got Tierney and Robertson, who I think could play at the highest, uh, highest level in football. We've got a top-class goalkeeper. It's just that centre-back pair yeah. that I hope we can get right. And a right-back. And a right-back, yep. Whether you play Tierney there. And uh, a striker. A striker that scores <laughs> goals. Yeah. Well, a striker you're so, that scores yeah. goals. Well, no, you've I, got... I, know he's done, I know he did well, but if we could get... A top striker yeah. who scores goals in big games. We have got a top striker. If we get Lee Griffiths fit and mentally right, 
we've got a top goal, we've got a top striker there that can score goals. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. For me, he has the best goal scorer in Scottish football. You just need to get him right and get him fit. Yeah. And if you get him fit and right, you've got a top striker there. And therein lies the problem, Barry. Fit and right. Um, but we'll wait to see if he is indeed available and scoring those goals. OK. Um, Republic of Ireland are part of company with Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane. Didn't quite work out for them in the end. Didn't win a match in 2018, Ruffy. Um, the writing was on the wall. Uh, Republic have been poor. Um, the king is dead. Long live the king, they say. They've got to look for a successor. Uh, I've even heard suggestions that Neil Lennon could be in the running. Yeah, I saw something on, on the telly today. I think he was around about 20 to 1. Uh, I'm sure Neil will be enjoying uh, Hibs uh, at this precise moment in time. And it's up to him. If he was, you know, obviously offered it, whether he wants at his early age to be part of the national side, or does he enjoy the day-to-day -day with Hibs? That it would be his decision. I can't see see Neil Lennon going there. I agree with Ruffy. I think he's day-to-day. -day, he likes the the contact with the players every single day. It's a different ball game at international level. You get them six times a year yeah. for ten days maximum. I think no Lennon. I think he'd be bored. I think Lenny likes the, the everyday involvement. OK, uh, just to uh, finish, a couple of points, Ruffy. Uh, Celtic AGM, uh, I suppose it's good when you when you have all that money in the bank. Um, Peter Lowell and Brendan Rodgers said that, you know, the plan is to spend and strengthen in January. Um, but the, the key elements, uh, I think, here are two quick ones. They might not take tickets for that game at Ibrox uh, because of safety concerns for that small number of Celtic fans. I'd be brutal about it. I think... Rangers need to rethink this policy of only <clears> giving <throat> Celtic that small corner. Um, I think they've pandered to some of their fans and Celtic, again, it's this tit-for-tat uh, situation where suddenly we have an old firm game with, what, seven, 800 opposition fans. It's killed it for me as a spectacle. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Uh, but it's each club looking after their own. Uh, we don't like it because we know that the both sets of fans add something to a game. Uh, there's no doubt, you know, when the, there's a large contingent. Yeah, at Parkhead as well, when the, the Rangers supporters are there in numbers, it just adds something to an old firm game. I, I think it'll kill it. I, I played in a lot of old firm games at Ibrox, and I was just used to having, the, I think it was 8,000 Celtic fans there. I think it'll ruin the atmosphere, honestly do. I think if you ask any Rangers player that's played in their games, that's what it's all about. Knowing that, Celtic, uh, that stands for the Celtic fans, and you've got three quarters of the stadium. I just, I, I loved the fact where it was like that. It, was, it just created a great atmosphere for me. And it was the same at Celtic Park when Rangers got about 8,000 as well. So I don't know what's going on there. I think they need to sort it and go back to um, giving them the full stand. Because I think if you ask any ex-player or current player, I think they would... Certainly, I would like to think they would agree with myself and, and say that's the way it should be. Yep. And a positive mention from Peter Lowell to a shareholder's question today about sectarian and unacceptable singing from Celtic fans. It's dragging the club down. Um, there's a there's a minority, <coughs> but they still get involved in it. Uh, I just think it's sickening, Ruffy, and sooner or later they have to go in there and take them out. Yeah, and it's how long do you keep going and taking fines? You know, it's the fines that are... Not hurting the club, but it's fines you could be doing something else with, bringing youth through our grassroots football, because some of the fines over the years has been too much. OK, um, we're going to end on a positive note. Barry's happy, Ruffy's happy, I'm happy. Scotland defeated Israel and they topped the Nations group. We've got two ways to get to uh, Euro 2020. Let's hope we can do it. Thanks to Barry, Ruffy and myself. Don't forget, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to see you Monday to Friday at 6. It's live. Welcome to PLZ Soccer. Why not join the football family and download the PLZ app? You'll get all the latest Scottish football news and up-to-date news on English and world football. There's also a feature here where you can record yourself talking about your favourite team. If we use the video, you could feature on our football show. For all the latest news in Scottish football, download the PLZ Soccer app in the App Store and in Google Play. Come and join the football family on PLZ Soccer.